we feel constantly that we're not good enough. We're sinners. Uh, you know, it's like um, uh, I, I thought of this story uh, uh, from when I was a kid, when, I, when we were like, I don't know, growing up in, in Bahrain, we used to watch WWF a lot. World Wrestling Federation. It's called World Wrestling Entertainment now, WWE. So if you know what I'm talking about, professional wrestling, we used to love Shawn Michaels, Bret the Hitman Hart, Undertaker, all these people. And I was really privileged because I was five years older than my, my uh, younger brother and seven, year, seven years older than my youngest brother, which meant I had two uh, kids at the right size to experiment with. So every time I left home, and my parents left home, what I would do is I'd say, okay guys, come on, it's time to do some wrestling now. And so here I am, you know, I'm doing all these moves, sharpshooter and leg locks and head locks and all this stuff, and they just went along with it. I had a lot of fun. I'm not sure if they did, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And so this one moment, one, one day, I get up on this cabinet next to my parents' bed, because you know, in wrestling, you climb up on the top rope and you do this jump and, you know, splash on the person on the, on the, on the, on the mat, and that's usually how you win and so I'm on this cabinet and I jump right and uh, I was a big boy even then okay so I jump and uh, my parents I jump and land the move the move was perfect but the bed was not in good condition I heard this really big crack in the bed I, I, I scooted down looked underneath and sure enough the biggest beam of the bed was broken in two. Oh man, I knew I was in trouble. I knew this was not gonna be good. My mom comes home first, then my dad. So when my mom came home, I took my mother, I led my mother to her bedroom. I showed her her bed, and I explained to her how I'd just broken her bed in half. My mother back in those days was not a very compassionate person, let me just put it that way. And she really enjoyed telling me what was about to happen for my sin. And so, you know, it's like, I don't know if you guys know who Russell Peters is, you know, a comedian. Uh, he has this line where he says his dad used to say this to him. His dad would say to him when he was in trouble, he said, Russell, somebody going to get hurt real bad. That's what my mom said, Fanu, somebody going to get hurt real bad today. And so I was terrified for my dad to come home because I knew I'd done something wrong. And a lot of people, they live that way. They may not admit it, but as a pastor, I've dealt with a lot of people coming towards the end of their life. And sure enough, most people will say, Fanu, I don't know what's going to happen to me when I die. I, I know of all the mistakes I've done, the, 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 the stuff that happened in my teens, in my 20s. My wife doesn't know this stuff. My, my parents don't know this stuff. My siblings don't know it. I know the secrets I carry, and I don't know if I will be forgiven. And Jesus comes to a culture that is conscious of their sin and killing animals to confess to God that they ought to die, but the animal dies for them, but they have to keep doing it over and over and over again. And the Son of God, the Lamb of God, He crosses over the Valley of the Kidron to go into the Garden of Gethsemane because He is going to wash away the sins of all of humanity once and for all. That's the gospel message, that your conscience is cleared by the sacrifice of Jesus. 